today we will be doing a cylinder balance test. I'll be using the Innova Equus 3145 for this, EEC4 OBD1. As I've described in previous videos, you can use your jumper if you don't have EEC4. You have MEX2 and you would use that diagnostic box connector. We, we have EEC4 here, so the CEC connector that I've described in previous videos. Now I have the uh, extension cable. I can do this from inside the car. Previously in my other videos I did not have this extension cable and just had to dangle it off the side there because this is part of the engine running test. Uh, you'll probably want this. It's a six foot extension cable. All right, first step, you will want to make sure that your key on engine off test passes with all ones, 111. System pass, okay. Do not do the key on engine running test unless you get a 111. My system already has 111, which it does. I've already passed the key on engine off test. Now for the key on engine running test, you want to make sure that your engine is up to temp. Now to make sure that your engine is up to temp, you'll want to start the car. Let that run for a couple minutes. Now the easiest way to tell if your car is up to temp is when that primary cooling fan comes on. So as soon as that fan kicks on, your car is up to temp. Now while you're waiting for your car to go up to temp, you can go ahead and connect your diagnostic connector. Kind of hard to do one-handed. Now you can just let that dangle in there. And then you can run this. Just drop it in your seat there. And then just wait for your cooling fan to come on. Now you can make this go faster by using your throttle. So it's right here. Just push that down. That'll raise the engine RPM up. You raise it up to about two, 3,000, something like that. And that should speed up the, the heating process because it's working harder. So that should come up the temp faster. All right, now we got the fan on. The next thing to do it is turn off the car. Come in here and Turn off your car. The purpose of the cylinder balance test is to assist the mechanic in finding a weak or non-contributing cylinder. The test is entered by depressing and releasing the throttle within two minutes after the engine running self-test, which is the key on engine running test. DTCs, also known as diagnostic trouble codes, have been output. Once the test is entered, the IAC duty cycle <laughs> is fixed and the engine is allowed to stabilize. Engine RPM is measured and stored for later use. Um, within that same test. Next, the fuel is shut off to cylinder 4 depending on the engine. Up to 8 cylinders, let's just say. After a brief stabilization period, basically the engine will go up to 2000 RPMs, it will hold that RPM and then it will measure against that RPM. The, injectors is, the injector is turned on and off again for that cylinder. The process is repeated for each cylinder. Um, so that's basically how that works. And then it'll measure let's say the higher injector and then 43 and then for the third level 20 percent so it'll cut by 65 43 and 20 so it, it cuts less fuel every time it cuts a lot it cuts let's just say this is just an example based off the rpm so so it does the major cut first and then it'll go less and less so if you come out good on the first test you don't need to do the second test all right now to start your key on engine running test Turn on the engine, and then you turn on your code scanner, it should zero itself out, and you hit test hold, and you'll see it starts blinking, and as soon as it hits your cylinder number, which is four, you turn the steering wheel, hold that, release, pressure brake switch, release, pressure OD on, OD off. And that's all of the live test inputs that you need for this particular car. Might be different for your car, so make sure that you look up in your manual which procedures you have to do for the key on engine running test. I wanted to show both that on this uh, code scanner, it will beep the same time your check engine light comes on. There's the check engine light down there. And a little box is blinking at the same time. Hopefully this should be 111. Four eleven. That sucks. Now, even if you get codes during the key on engine running test, you can still do a cylinder balance test. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we'll skip these codes, and it should repeat. So we'll get four eleven and then five twenty one again. Your codes are done. 
and that is for the Keon engine running test. Let's see if it does any continuous memory codes. I might wait a minute to see if it does any continuous memory codes. I don't think it will because I've cleared my ECU so many times lately. All right, so next, what you want to do is go down here and only do a little blip. Not wide open throttle, just a little blip. And you hear the engine start revving up. And then you're going to hear it start cutting fuel to each cylinder, and it'll sputter, and that's normal. So it's sputtering now. Sputter, 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 sputter. And that's the fuel injector pulsing getting cut. And then it should start outputting codes. Right now, it'll it'll go through every cylinder first. So that was cylinder number four. I think it starts with four, and then goes three, two, one. Now we're doing cylinder three. I don't know how well you can hear that. That was cylinder two. It looks to be about 1900 RPMs. So all of its calculations will be based off of that higher end RPM and looks like we're going down to 1500 on cylinder one and they, sh they should all be fit about 1500 if it's going to be a good test and now the test is done and it'll even out that idle and it'll start spitting out codes see there goes the check engine light while it's beeping on there at the same time well it will be all 90s so there's a 90 for cylinder one. Okay, well, why is 90 passing? Well, because it can do up to eight cylinders for EEC4. So if cylinder eight was bad, it would be an 80, if cylinder seven, and so on. Since this is only a four cylinder car, I can only possibly get 10, 20, 30, 40, and 90 for a pass. And since these are all 90s, we're, we're looking pretty good. And I've done this before, so I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be all 90s. But let's just say that you have, you know, a code 10 on the first one then that would indicate that code or that cylinder number one is weak in general. Now that we have all nines, we're looking good. Now if you want to, let's say you get 10 and you're like, uh oh, I have a bad cylinder, or let's just say mildly bad, it's the first level. There are three levels. First level, which is this one, this test, shows a possibly weak or bad cylinder, possibly clogged fuel injector, um, or, you know, spark plug resistance is out of spec, you know, bad resistance on a, on a spark plug lead. So if you want to do the second level test, then you just go down and you do the same thing. Just a little bit of throttle. And you see it start raising up and now we're doing level two. So if you did not pass on level one, it drops you down to level two. The ECU will basically say, well, how bad is this cylinder? So we're going to level two and it, and it cuts even less fuel. So let's just say for just for an example that the engine or the fuel injectors are cutting by 50% now instead of 65. The more you get to level three, the more normal your fuel injectors were run. You can repeat the test, but you can only repeat the test on level three. So let's say you want to do it a fourth and fifth time, it will still only do the third level. So what happens if it says you still have bad one on level two? That's basically going to be the same exact thing, a clogged fuel injector, bad wire, or a bad cylinder. So there's three basic possibilities there that are going on. So let's say you want to do it on level three. Well, you do the same exact thing, you hit the gas pedal, you run through that, and if that comes back, then that is either a fully clogged fuel injector, complete loss of signal to the cylinder, or a bad cylinder completely not combusting at all. And that's bad. If you fail something on the third level, that's really bad. Really, really bad. So I got all 90s on the first level, so I don't even have to do the second. I'm just doing this to show you basically, you know, the steps in case this happens to you. And that's about all there is to doing a cylinder balance test. This is not a substitute for a compression test. Cylinder balance test will do a couple of different things that a compression test won't do. It will also tell you the health of your fuel injectors, possibly, because you have those three culprits there, the fuel injectors, the spark leads, or the cylinder itself. So it kind of helps 
to have an overall picture of your cylinders and that's what a cylinder balance test does and i hope you've learned something and if you have e c four you can go out and do this doesn't matter what car you have if you have e c four you can do this uh, balance test i believe all e c four cars have a, a cylinder balance test um, and even if you don't even if you have mex two i think there's still a mex two cylinder balance test i uh, hope you learned something new cool